This video is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Before we get to this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Let's get right into the video. The University of Oregon Ducks first wrestling season was in the season of 1953 through 1954. They were producing All-Americans almost yearly by the mid-60s, and in 1975, the University of Oregon won their first Pac-12 Conference Championship as a team and would go on to win two more back-to-back -back in the years 1981 and 1982. Along the way, they experienced their first individual national champion, with John Miller winning the 115 weight class in 1969. The Ducks would experience highs and lows as a program, but I would say for the most part were consistent in success always being a strong contender in the Pac-12 Conference and always finishing around mid-level nationally. Heading into the 2000s, they were still producing consistent All-Americans and even had national champion Shane Webster in 2006. Their peak in the Pac-12 came in 2002 when they finished runner-up behind the now also cut Boise State Wrestling Program. But from there, they had spotty finishes in the Pac-12 going all the way to second to last in 2008. Although this decline in performance could have been due to the Ducks team receiving the news that this season would be their final one. In July of 2007, heading into that school year, the University of Oregon Athletic Director, Pat Kilkenny, announced that the University of Oregon baseball program would be returning after being cut 26 years ago. And along with it, a competitive cheerleading program would be instated. In order to implement these sports, Kilkenny also announced that the Oregon wrestling program would be cut after the completion of the upcoming season. The reason stated for this was that like many other fall and wrestling programs before it, the University of Oregon was falling victim to Title IX. Title IX is a federal civil rights law in the United States of America. Title IX protects people from discrimination based on sex and education programs or activities that receive federal financial assistance. So in athletics, this means that there must be equal participation opportunity for both male and female sports, equal financial assistance, and other components like gear and equipment. So this was the reason a sport had to be axed to Oregon to bring on baseball and another female sport. So how does Nike tie into this? How are they the reason for the wrestling program being dropped like the title and thumbnail for this appear to say? The only way for us to attempt to answer this is to enter a theoretical deep dive. So hang in there and let me give you a quick briefing to better understand. If you don't already know, Oregon is also home to Nike headquarters located in Beaverton, Oregon. Phil Knight and Bill Bowerman were the co-founders of Nike. Phil Knight ran track and field at the University of Oregon and Bill Bowerman was actually his coach during that time there. Phil Knight today has an estimated net worth of around 54.5 billion and is arguably the most influential alumni to come out of the school. And Phil following his success has been incredibly philanthropic with his alma mater, where in total Knight has donated well over 300 million to just the University of Oregon athletics, not including academics. Eventually, Oregon earned the nickname University of Nike as their deep ties to the founder allowed them access to the latest Nike gear, equipment, and other technology before anyone else. Nike had become synonymous with the University of Oregon. Phil loved his alma mater, and he made it clear he would funnel as much of his money into it as he needed if it meant success for them. But really, there were only three sports cared about at the University of Oregon, and those sports were football, basketball, and track and field, all storied in historical programs with years of success and championships. These were the money machines for the school, and in turn got the majority of support from the administration. With all this in mind, let me now explain the alleged snowball of events that will tie Phil Knight and Nike to the cancellation of Oregon wrestling. A new basketball arena had been trying to get built for some time since around 2000 at the University of Oregon, and their attempts had been unsuccessful. Phil was totally on board with building the arena, and in fact, he really, really wanted that arena built. They would not be able to build this arena if they did not have his helpful contributions, but he refused to donate to this, and it was for one reason. Phil Knight at the time was apparently beefing hard with the current athletic director, Bill Moose. I think that's how you say his name, Moose. He didn't have time for procedural roadblocks and wanted work done fast on campus when he was involved, Moose more than likely wouldn't just give over his authority as athletic director tonight, and Moose intended to follow every administrative and procedural step in building the arena which Phil couldn't stand. So in a standoff, Phil withheld his contribution to the arena until Moose resigned or was removed from his position as athletic director. This friction must have lasted for some time until in 2006, Moose announced his resignation as athletic director. Moose had been bought out of his contract as AD for $2 million, the replacement for Moose, a longtime Oregon donor 
Pat Kilkenny. Pat Kilkenny was a wealthy businessman who had made a fortune from building up insurance companies and selling them, as well as making valuable investments for himself and others. He had been an advisor and friend of Phil Knight's for some time before accepting the position as the new Oregon AD. This was an incredibly odd choice for an athletic director, as Kilkenny had never worked a day in his life and in the athletics department. And although he attended Oregon, he actually never graduated and didn't possess a college degree, which was completely unheard of for an athletic director. But he proved valuable for the university. As six months later, the university received a donation of $100 million from Phil Knight, and in no time, shovels were put to work and they were well on their way to a new basketball arena. So essentially, it's believed Kilkenny was brought in in order to fast track the construction of the new arena Phil Knight wanted built. The arena, which would eventually be called Matthew Knight Arena. So how does this tie into the cancellation of the wrestling program? Well, in his short tenure as athletic director, Kilkenny would manage to make one other major move that would shake up the Oregon athletics and lead to the demise of Ducks wrestling. Other problems were brewing in Eugene. You see, Oregon's in-state rival, Oregon State, had just won the College World Series back-to-back -back in 2006 and 2007. And word was that the people in Oregon's camp were starting to get jealous of the Little Brothers school garnering all the attention. So a coalition was formed to bring back Oregon baseball that included some of Oregon's most wealthiest and influential alumni and was spearheaded by the former U of Oregon baseball coach, Mel Krause. They had a meeting with Kilkenny where they presented 150 financial commitments for the capital to start two new sports programs. And with that, an entire network of new donors to university University. So Kilkenny, who had been thrown into a job that he has no clue how to do, now has 149 new donors throwing money at him for baseball. And so he was like, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. We should definitely have a baseball team. And it was done. It was said that wrestling was chosen as a sport because for three main reasons. One, lack of facilities for Oregon wrestling. Two, lack of community support. And three, financial sustainability. Breaking these down, the first one's easy. At the time, Oregon Wrestling didn't have an official facility they held practice at. They had surrendered their wrestling room earlier in the year to a new athletic training center and had been practicing in a lone gym in the Student Recreation Center. A new facility required around four to seven million dollars and at that time it appeared the Oregon Athletic Department didn't have much interest in directing that money into wrestling. The next two reasons, lack of community support and financial sustainability somewhat go hand in hand. Almost all universities but especially major D1 schools operate like a business. Although Oregon and the Pacific Northwest had a solid wrestling base living there, and the Oregon Ducks were pretty successful as a team, their attendance for home meets did not seem to grow or develop over time, and sports that bring in people to an event will bring profit and receive more support from the administration. Either way, this gives the first two reasons some legitimacy. Financial sustainability is when things begin to become suspect. Overall, a wrestling program is one of the more cost-effective college sport programs to run. So to say that trading off wrestling for baseball will be a more financially sustainable option for the school is hard to believe. With cutting the wrestling team for a baseball team, Kilkenny projected the baseball program would turn a profit within five years. As many could have guessed though, this was not the case at all. The gap between the baseball program expenses and revenue has widened almost every single year of its existence. So while Kilkenny was extraordinarily wrong about the baseball team turning a profit, he more than likely knew this would be the case. In reality, financials aren't really the issue. Consider that when any other Oregon sports program had needed resources to boost its performance, Phil Knight was there to provide any amount of dollars needed to do so. So why wasn't he there to do that for Oregon wrestling? And that right there is why a lot of people in wrestling today still hold resentment and put blame towards Phil Knight and in turn Nike for cutting wrestling at the University of Oregon. With them, Oregon easily could have afforded to subsidize both sports, keeping the wrestling around and adding baseball and cheerleading to stay in compliance with Title IX. But people look at it as Phil Knight sat back and did nothing. And I have a theory as to why him or Nike wouldn't care to support wrestling then. It was because they had no reason to. Wrestling's market in Nike was tiny at the time, and it wasn't like losing the support of a demographic like wrestling was important to either Phil Knight or Nike. And by 2022 now, that's clearly changed. Nike's presence in wrestling has grown considerably and is one of the more prominent brands seen worn in the sport today. So does that mean things will change in the eyes of the Oregon Athletic Department or Phil Knight or Nike? It's hard to tell. It doesn't seem promising. But Chael Sonnen, an All-American for Oregon Wrestling who went on to become an MMA superstar and then analyst, did an interview with Ryan Warner on the Wrestling Change My Life podcast, where he talks about a wrestling practice facility built at Phil Knight's request in 2021. Who's built a new facility? And when they built it, Phil Knight told them to build it for a wrestling room. So they're not going to use it for wrestling right now, but they've actually spent the money and built it. This got finished about a year ago. 
So if wrestling, if you snapped your fingers and wrestled, you go roll some res light down on there. They've got the showers, the locker rooms, the space, the bike areas, the coach's office. They built a wrestling room for the future in case they want to bring it back. And look, that's a little bit promising in my opinion. Now it doesn't appear besides this that this facility has ever been officially announced at all and this does seem more promising than anything else related to Oregon wrestling coming back. So what do you guys think? Through this chain of events, is Nike, Phil Knight, or Pat McKinney to blame? Or is the fault in the lack of community support for wrestling? Let us know in the comments. There was a lot of details for this I had to leave out to save the length of the video. Let me know if there's anything important I missed or that I should have went ahead and mentioned. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe. Peace.